You know, I find sometimes after reading that new 900 page fantasy novel, it's time to, it's time to do something a little bit quick. Hey, what's up, bookworms and crouch potatoes? We are back today for another Why You Should Read on one of my favorite contemporary authors, which, of course, is Blake Crouch. Guys, yes, as you can tell, yes, Crouch Potato, I am quite a fan of the works of Mr. Blake Crouch. Is this someone I've wanted to kind of talk about for a while? Oh, I don't want to drop these. <laughs> Should have thought that out better. With Blake Crouch, I feel like he's an author who's had a pretty successful career he really has but somehow i feel like he's still somewhat underrated now i admit that might just be kind of in my small sci-fi fantasy circle it just kind of feels that way but it feels like when i convince most people to try blake crouch they end up being like you know what this is pretty damn good and i would have to agree but guys in case you don't know Blake Crouch is a mystery sci-fi thriller author. He's got 17 books to his name. He's got more short story collections and things like that. But the guy has been quite prolific for the last 20 years. First book was released in 2004. It's called Desert Places. He actually wrote that when he was a teenager and got it published in 2004. And now all the way up to being a consistent New York Times bestseller. Now look guys. A name that you'll hear me come up with a lot when I talk about Blake Crouch is Michael Crichton. And there's a reason for that. Michael Crichton is my second favorite author of all time. So when I do put the crown on a new author and say he is the next Michael Crichton, that is quite the endorsement for me. Because I wouldn't say that without truly, truly meaning it. And I do feel like at the time, yes, I do feel like my, at Blake Crouch, if I'm picking a successor to that Michael Crichton throne, it is definitely Blake Crouch. Uh, I first tried him in 2021. I was doing my reread of Michael Crichton books, and a lot of people have found the channel been like, have you tried Blake Crouch? I feel like the things that you like about Crichton, you would really enjoy about Blake Crouch. And I've gotten that recommendation before over the years. You know, Michael Crichton sadly passed away in 2008, been kind of looking for that replacement. And authors, I won't mention their names, but authors have been recommended to me, and I tried them like, uh, yeah, not bad, but it doesn't ever give me that same feeling I had when I read Michael Crichton books until I read Dark Matter in 2021 and then Recursion soon after. And I said, I think this is it. This has been really something I've been looking for for a while. So if I mention Michael Crichton a lot, it's just because, yeah, I think the, the comparisons are, are truly apt, especially to the stuff that he is writing currently as opposed to maybe some of the stuff he was writing about a decade ago. And I'll explain that as I go along. I've been reading his bibliography backwards. Read two, I read Dark Matter, and then I read Recursion, and then I was like, okay, well, I need to get some more of this. So I started working my way backwards. I read What Abandoned. I read the uh, Wayward Pines trilogy. I read Run. I just recently finished Desert Places. So I've been kind of working backwards, and I'm having a great time with it. I expected to be like, okay, well, maybe his, his works aren't as good back then. I'm like, they're just different. I think he's always had really, really great great ideas and that has what has led him to be now i say i've read i've read nine books of his and none of them have been misses that's you know batting a thousand that's quite good right so uh let's go ahead and talk about guys why you're here why do i think that you should read mr blake crouch well uh, i kind of alluded to it there in the cold open if you're one of those people like me reads them big epic fantasy books them 800 place door 800 page door stoppers uh you know book one of a 12 book series and things like that and you need a break you need a little bit of a, a palate cleanser maybe I, I can't think of a better author for you than blake crouch now that's something that i used to always say that i did when i was reading books uh back in the day was i would read a michael crichton book or a stephen king book or or an ann rice book something like that to kind of break up the monotony not any of huge epic fantasy, long series, long sci-fi books, things like that. That's someone that I think that even with a modern eye, you're going to find something with Blake Crouch, I think, that you like, especially if you're a fan of science fiction. Now, I, what I think about is great about his books is he, he transcends those genres. I thought for sure when I when I first read Dark Matter, I wrote Crouch, okay, this guy is like Crichton, that he is very much a sci-fi, techno-thriller kind of author. But now that I've went back, I've seen, okay, he does mystery, he does action, he does uh, post-apocalyptic, or actually apocalyptic. Uh, he does dystopian, he does all kinds of stuff. This guy does a little bit of everything. He does some nice crime detective kind of stories as well. So I, I think that there's going to be something there for everyone if you're really looking for that. But I, I've consistently said, guys, I think standalones help to avoid burnout from those long series. So standalones are always going to be great. And I feel like with, with uh, Blake Crouch, you can get through his books 
really in a couple of days. Uh, again, I think even as long as book is maybe like 500 pages and still you can just blow through the pages. He's, he's got no fluff in his writing. It is all meat and potatoes, guys. It's great, great stuff. And you'll be able to continue just flying through him because he's one of those authors who will just grab you. He will grab you and he will not let go until you're like, I've got to know the answer to everything that is going on. And uh, yeah, it's 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 going to be the, the the very essence of one more chapter, one more chapter, one more chapter. Next thing you know, it's four in the morning. You got to go to work in two hours. And you're like, well, at least I finished I finished the book first. So uh, I think a, a, a great way to describe late Crouch books are they feel like nonstop action. But what he's actually able to do with that is he creates that feeling, but he doesn't do it in lieu of character development. His characters still, you feel a connection with them because he puts, you know, parts of their everyday life into your head. They aren't just blank Avatar A going through this action scene that I've written. This isn't Michael Bay or something. He actually does make you care about his characters, and that's why you want to see them succeed in the way he does it. Now, that's been, I think that's been one of the, the biggest criticisms uh, when I was going back through my Michael Crichton rereads. A lot of people were like, look, I think these stories are great, the ideas are awesome, but the characters kind of, eh. So I feel like it may, hey, if you like Michael Crichton, but you felt like he could have done a little more with his character, I think maybe Blake Crouch will get you there a little bit. I called him the next Michael Crichton because he writes techno thrillers in a way to where it's the idea of human advancement in science and things that maybe we can do, but maybe we shouldn't be messing with them. You know, maybe that's going too far. At what point do we cease to become human, become a machine? What point do we try to play God? Those kind of things. He presents those questions saying, hey, maybe this is why, even though we have the power to do it, maybe we shouldn't. Maybe we shouldn't mess with these things because uh, it could cause a lot more problems than it fixes. And, and also that idea of, you know, hey, we would begin to do some of these things for good. And over time, we'll see, well, how do I profit off of it? And how do I, you know, gain power off of it? So these are things that he does always mess with with his books in that Michael Crichton way. That's why I always get that kind of that kind of uh, recommendation there if you've liked Michael Crichton's ideas. For example, let's look at Michael Crichton's biggest one, Jurassic Park. The idea, that, okay, sure, maybe we could have the technology to do something like this. Should we? This is why it would be a bad idea. He does that in just about every one of his more recent books. Another thing in that Michael Crichton way is that he will present heavy scientific themes, but he'll put them into layman's terms where you don't have to have like six PhDs to understand what he's talking about. I think that's something that Michael Crichton always did great. He didn't hold your hand, but he also didn't make you feel like you needed to go do homework. He wasn't giving you a homework assignment so you can go off on your own and understand this. I think he's very much like Andy Weir in that way. If you want another contemporary author to compare him to there, I think that he will present major scientific ideas, but he's never like, okay, now figure out what it means. He does the homework for you. And if you want to waste your time, fact checking his math. You can do that, but you don't have to because I can assure you if you're going to do the homework, he did the homework first. So I don't feel like he's just throwing crap at a wall, making it up as he goes. But I, I will say, and there's something I'll touch on when I talk about what maybe maybe might not work for you, is that science might not always be exactly what some of the uh, some of the stat heads are looking for. Let, let's put it that way. But I mentioned before, I feel like he's very multi- multi-genre and going backwards to his bibliography i've seen that so obviously recursion upgrade dark matter you know his three most recent books very sci-fi very about the ideas i was talking about presenting these ideas of stuff we shouldn't maybe be messing with and why they could probably be bad but then you got uh you know dark, uh, but abandon and which abandoned goes actually plays with uh the mystery by playing with two different timelines that kind of uh, coalesce to make the give you all the answers. So so much of a, of a mystery there. Then you got uh, Wayward Pines, which might be the biggest mystery trilogy I've ever read because for two-thirds of that, you're going to be like, I cannot figure out what's going on, but good God, I want to know. Almost like the X-Files Twin peaks -y kind of way. And that would be a perfect blend, I think, of what the Wayward Pines trilogy was. Uh, what else? We got, uh, well, I just read Run earlier this year, and I read that in a day because it was just such a, a just a, uh, this non-stop thrill ride that's very much uh, uh, apocalyptic as while the world is basically civilization is coming to a close you're seeing the panic and what all would happen as that happens he does that great i just finished desert places which is very much uh, I, the way i described it was imagine misery by stephen king but the antagonist is the judge from Blood Meridian by Cormac McCarthy. That, that, that's what it is. So, so instead of Annie, you get the judge. You know. So I, I, I definitely see that he has so many different ideas in that brain of his. And it's just amazing to go backwards in time and, and look at these books through. Uh, like I said, I had already presumed that he was just a sci-fi author. And going back and seeing now that he has thrillers of all sorts and varieties 
He always keeps you guessing. That's just uh, such a such a great, great thing. But one thing that he does in his books, one of the themes that he has that really, really connect with me is that he always puts an emphasis on family. Now, that be that be husband and wife, be that be uh, parents and children, be that be siblings. He's always able to make that theme huge in this. Now, me being a nuclear family guy, that's something that obviously resonates with me. Now, I know that's not going to work for everyone. Like I said, I, I some people on my Discord read Run that didn't have kids, and they just found the parents annoying. Whereas me, I was like, I don't know that any parent would act differently under that stressful of a situation, you know? So it, I think it might actually kind of depend on where you're at in your life if some of these will click for you. But for me, someone who has, you know, the wife and the two kids and the dog, you know, and, and lives in the suburbs, that's stuff that's obviously going to resonate with me very, very well. That was something that I, I, I love that he puts an emphasis on that. And he will always kind of pull at the heartstrings in the, in the final third of a book because of that connection that he's made with these family members. It's always, always just great stuff. He always just nails that. I'll say he has a, uh, he's, a he's not exactly a wordsmith, but he has a very accessible prose. Uh, again, I've always said, guys, I'm not a prose snob. I'm not the one to ask about these things because uh, I'll read something people be like, oh, it seems like it was written by like a sixth grader. And I'm like, oh, I thought it was fine. So I, I'm not really one to ask about that. I feel like it's very accessible you don't need a thesaurus. You don't need a dictionary the whole time you're reading it to understand what he's saying. But I also don't feel like it's unintelligent or anything. But I think that makes his books highly bingeable. And that's why I've read every one of his books that I've read now. I've read in a couple of days because they're just such a quick, quick thrill ride. And again, it's just a sugar rush, guys. If that's what you're needing, I think that's good. this is perfect author for you. And I think you should definitely pick it up. Now, what are some things that maybe might not work for you? Now, this is going to kind of decide if I think Blake Crouch will be an author for you or not. If you're looking for hard science, he's not your guy. He this isn't this isn't Asimov. This this isn't uh, this isn't even the expanse, guys. You aren't going to be finding hard calculus, mathematic equations, and things like that. Uh, I mean, he messes with like DNA codes and stuff when he comes to upgrade. But again, much in the, it's never more complicated than a Michael Crichton book was, I think. And I, I think that you'll be fine. He has some ideas. Of, of, of science that's, that will be kind of confusing. Like, for example, uh, in Dark Matter, he talks about Schrodinger's cat, which is something that you can get really down a, a, a nerd rabbit hole with trying to describe this. He describes it in such a simple way that's like, oh, that makes much more sense. So he tells me in this big of a paragraph instead of, you know, yeah, he's able to do those things. And I consider that great. But if you are a hard science person and you want him to tell you how the sausage is made, he might not be the author for you. And that's a complaint that I've heard a lot is that he's like Walmart science, I believe it was called, because he doesn't, and same with Andy Weir, that he doesn't really get into the, 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 the nuts and bolts of what make that mathematical equation work. You're not reading a Neil deGrasse Tyson book here. You're going to be fine if you aren't looking for those things. But that bothers you. It, it might, might be one of those things, might be one of those things kind of bother you. You don't have to have a PhD in astrophysics to understand this stuff. I consider that a good thing, but others others don't. Like I said, if you don't have kids, uh, some of the fa some of the family stuff might, I don't want to say bore you, but it just might not resonate with you. Again, his prose isn't exactly going to knock you over. Also, all of his books are standalone, except Wayward Pines. All of his books are standalone. So if you're looking for like a long, long, long adventure with a group of characters, uh, that might be about as good as you're going to get. But of course, if you look at Wayward Pines here, uh, I want to say the Wayward Pines, the whole trilogy is smaller than most fantasy books that we read on this channel, guys. So you can actually read those pretty quick as well. I think I read all three of those in about a week. So uh, again, this isn't the author you're looking for if you want to get invested in a long journey. I say you're fine with your SFF tomes if that's what you're looking for, but you're just wanting a quick adrenaline rush. I think that you will be hard pressed to find another author besides Blake Crouch that does it this dang good. So as for my final thoughts, guys, I, I gotta say this is easily my non my, my non fantasy favorite contemporary author right now. Anything this guy puts out going forward, I'm going to pick up on day one and read it because I think it's just great. I've still got several books. Uh, like I said, nine. he's got 17 release books and some short stories. I'm going to continue to read. Uh, I want to read all of his stuff. I'm going to be continuing with the Andrew Z. Thomas uh, Luther Kite series. That's a sequel to Dark uh, Desert Places. I'm going to finish that up here sometime this year. I'd like to get into, oh, God, was it called? Fully Loaded, I think. And I have, a, I have a short story collection one over here I haven't read yet either. Or no, I think Famous is the one that's the other book. Yeah, I should research this before, before I talk to you guys, huh? Yeah, Fully Loaded is the short story collection. I got that one right here. 
So, uh, yeah, I'm in it to win it with Blake Crouch. I want to read everything this guy's written. Uh, I, I think he's an awesome guy, too, if that really matters to you. I did get to talk to him on the channel right before Upgrade came out. Very, very awesome guy. Uh, he even admitted that Michael Crichton is a major influence for him, and he was quite happy that I made that comparison with, with Mr. Crichton. I got to imagine if it's someone you grew up uh, reading, uh, if you hear someone compare you to them, that's probably got to be quite flattering. you know. But uh, I, I love everything this guy's put out so far. And like I said, I've been looking for that heir apparent to Michael Crichton since he sadly passed away in 2008. And I think I finally found it in Blake Crouch. So I've reviewed several Blake Crouch books on the channel. I think I've done Dark Matter, I've done Recursion, I've done the Wayward Pines trilogy, I've done Upgrade. If you guys want to know more, you can find more on the channel. But for me, with Blake Crouch, guys, best thing I can tell you is you can start wherever you want. I recommend people start with Dark Matter just because it's such a gangster book. It's my favorite. I mean, he deals with infinite realities, you know, and you think about like parallel universes and things like that where one tiny little thing could be different in a parallel universe. It's just such a neat concept and uh, very much uh, the multiverse is a very, very sexy thing right now next to all these superhero movies, but uh, with, with this, the way that he does it, it it's so exciting. But uh, most people seem like uh, Dark Matter Recursion seem to be the place where most people start with him. Uh, if you want like a little bit more mystery, like I said, X-Files meets Twin Peaks. I think that uh, the Wayward Pines trilogy would be the place to start for you. And if you just want like some good old detective serial killer crime kind of stuff, I I'd say Desert Places is a great place to start as well. None of these are a big commitment, guys. They're very, very short books. And you can fly through them really, really quick. So if you want to know anything more about any of these particular titles, drop in the comments, guys, and let me know. And I can give you a nice little sales pitch. But uh, I hope you will pick up the works of Blake Crouch anywhere you can start. I think you'll have a great time with it. And again, multi-genre. So I think there's going to be something for everyone. So guys, Blake Crouch, have you read him? What do you think? What's your favorite Blake Crouch book? Have you read him and he didn't work for you? That's okay too. Drop in the comments, guys, and let me know. And I will talk to you there.